God, guys, I got so much information buzzing around in my head. I hardly know where to start. So if I come across as sound like an air hose with the end cut off, let me apologize in advance, all right? Okay, so rewind about a year ago and Turkish air gun manufacturer Hatsan sent to me for review a Hatsan Flash Carbine 25 Cal. That was a pre-charged pneumatic in the $300 price point and I came away from that review really kind of taken back with all the air gun you know you could get for in that $300 window. It was good at 50 yards, it was good at 100 yards, it had a good trigger, it had smooth and, and, and nice cycling, had a good magazine, it was quiet, it made big power, it was small, right? It was short, it was narrow, it was lightweight. It just kind of checked all the boxes for me. All right, now fast forward from then, six months or go back six months, and they sent another gun for review, which was called the Hatsan Flash Pup or Bull Pup. Well, now we're in the $400 price point. That one was three, this one was four. That one was a 25 cal, this one was a 2.2. They're also available in 177. They shared the same guts, so same barrel, engine, power plant, trigger, all of that stuff. And again, I came away really impressed. It did well at 50, it did well at 100. The power was good, the trigger was good, the cycling was even smoother and lighter. I think maybe because it was a 22 cal and required less hammer spring just a guess. And I liked it even more because it was shorter, it was lighter, it was even more compact because it was in that bullpup design, right? So now Hatsan has sent the Vectus and that's what you see here. And we're kind of in the middle on price point. We were 300, we were 400, and now we're 360. So this, they don't have flash in the name of this, at least I don't think, but this is a flash on the inside. Flash barrel, flash trigger, flash cocking and cycling, flash power levels, it's all got flash guts, all right? But there's some real differences about this gun that could really add a layer of value to some of you air gunners. One is that obviously they've literally coated this entire thing stem to stern in a really tough, rugged, thick poly, all right? The only metal I see sticking out of this thing is right up here around the reservoir, a little bit here at the top of the receiver, and the, uh, the safety, the safety throw here is metal. Otherwise, your rubber on the back and your poly everywhere. Now, as you know, I read all of your comments on this YouTube channel, on my main YouTube channel, AEAC Home, on Facebook and Instagram. I read them all because I want to know where you guys are at so that I can stay relevant in your world. And in a common thread, I almost always get more than once when I do a review, someone comes along and they say, you know, I could never take that into the woods. That is just way too pretty of an air gun, right? Well, here's your answer to that, all right? This could quite possibly be the ultimate basher woods back of the truck, going camping, leave it at the cabin, whatever, because it performs at a high level, it's in a good price point, and it's coated stem to stern in this poly, which also gives it some, some added functionality, and, and we'll, we'll circle back to that, all right? Now, the reason my head's buzzing is because I've spent the last two days with this gun, learning it, forming opinions, trying to figure out where I was with the product, where I am now, and when I first saw this in January at SHOT Show in Las Vegas, and I spent time with Hotson, I said, oh cool, that's another Flash, because I knew I was a fan of the Flash. What I didn't know is that I was gonna wind up being such a fan of this. Now, my jury is still a little bit out because I have two more full days to spend with it, getting ready, getting it ready and learning it, filming for the full review that you'll catch on AEAC Home. But where I'm at now, and I can't believe I'm saying this, is I think I actually like the under lever cocking better than the side bolt in those guns. I don't know if I'm gonna regret saying that or take that back, but and I'm kind of shocked that I'm saying it, but that's where I'm at now, and, and let me tell you why. So, you know, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, well, that's good. The hunters will like that. But for a lot of us who like to shoot from the bag and are into precision, I mean, let's face it, we're air gunners. We're about 
tinkering and being precise. It's just, you know, it's just in our DNA, you know. So I'm picturing myself using this, trying to shoot this thing from the bag and cycling it from the bag and then it's not gonna work and it's gonna make my life miserable because I spend so much of my time evaluating product from the bag. By the way, a couple of you every now and then will comment, why do you always shoot it from the bag, Steve? Why don't you shoot freehand? The answer to that question is I'm, I'm reviewing product trying to give the manufacturer a fair shake. And in doing so, I work hard to remove myself, the very much flawed, full of error Steve Shalley, from that equation so that the evaluation is about the capabilities of the gun, not my capabilities. So that's why you always see me working so hard with hold, approach, calling pellets, putting them on the bags, getting the balance and feel just right so I can get the maximum potential out of the gun every time and every review. That's what that's, what that's all about. But long and short of that whole story is this under lever cocking actually works like a dream from the bag and it actually works better because I'm sitting there on the bag and my hands in here, right? And I've got a bag here. I've got one kind of floating in this area and I'm just working this forward like so and I'm bringing it back up, right? And then I'm taking my shot. There's none of like this stuff, which tends to kind of shift the gun on the bags. You know, there's none of this back here in the bull pop, which tends to shift it. There's no like cocking bolt up here, which pulls it, you know, and just screws out of that, all that up. I can literally just almost stay right on target, cycle the gun, and I'm right there. And of course, if you're out in the field with this bad boy, and you know, you missed your shot, boom, there you are with the other one. So I've completely reversed the opinion I had going in that I, I think I like this more. Now, one of the reasons I like this more is when, when you take a really high powered air gun, like our little buddy, the Vectus here, and especially in 22, and you're trying to compress that spring, it takes some strength whether you know, you're in a side lever cocking or a little bolt action cocking, you have to compress the spring that's gonna release itself and smack that valve hard enough to get enough flow of air in there to where you're gonna get the power out of it that you want. And that takes some effort. This is actually effortless in comparison to the Flash Pup and the Flash Carbine. And I thought those guns, and they were, lightweight and easy to cock and cycle. And I think it's because this design gives you so much leverage because this is actually the cocking stroke. And I, you have all of this leverage instead of just this little jazz. And the other thing that's cool is you guys all know from shooting these guns, sometimes you get pellets that want to fit tighter in the breech. For example, the pile drivers. I can't get those damn things in 90% of the guns that I review. I just can't get them in, right? But this guy here, it was so easy to cycle those because, you know, when you shake someone's hand, that, that squeezing motion, you're, literally, you're just like squeezing it into the breech. And it's just like, it, it's just the easiest thing. And the other little thing that kind of won me over, and I know it's kind of stupid, but this little ball bearing detent here that's on a spring, there was just something about that little, that just, it just did it for me. I know that sounds cheesy. I know some of you will understand exactly what I'm saying. Others of you will have no idea. But you know, it, 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 just, it just did it for me. And look, like you guys, I'm not stupid. Hold on, doorbell's ringing. Sorry, my wife's grandfather came by to drop off some dishes. Where was I? Okay, so you know, like you guys, I'm not blind and dumb, right? I don't think that this is gonna, the looks of this thing is gonna win over the hearts of air gunners, but you know what? I don't think it was trying to. So, you know, back to this poly, right? So it's good, it's rough, it's tumble, it coats it all over, but it adds some nice functionality to the gun. And by that, I mean, with this poly design, you get end-to-end -end weaver up here on top of the gun, right? And so why would that be important? Well, it gives you more versatility as far as where you're gonna put your scope and stuff, but Hatsan actually includes open sights with the gun, which is totally appropriate for this thing 
because this is a 22 cal making 41 freaking foot pounds of energy. So you want a bad boy rifle that's good for taking them giant rodents that are nuisance in your backyard, you know, on the farm or whatever, holy moly. And you know, not everybody wants an expensive scope on the top and not everybody wants to make it eight and a half pounds. Maybe you want to leave it, you know, the six and a half pounds. Well, you just, you use these removable sights that they include with the gun. This is the back one. This is the front one. They very simply just thread on here. Look, they very simply just thread on here. Right, and then this one, if you can leave it on there if you want to, if you're not using it, just collapse it. And this one does the same thing. It collapses, now it's not like, you know, don't have any misconception, that's not gonna like fit under a scope or anything, but it'll certainly make the thing fit in the gun sleeve a heck of a lot better, or in the gun bag or whatever. So, you know what? That's another common thread I see in your comments. Why don't air gun ma more air gun manufacturers include open end sights on their pre-charged pneumatics anymore? Well guys, there you go, Hudson's done it. Right, it also comes with a single shot tray that the biggest piece of lead I put in here was the 35 grain JSB. Comes with two magazines. They're superb, they're easy to use, they're accurate. They ain't the most precise fitting things in the world, but you know what, they get the job done. It doesn't seem to hurt accuracy. You'll see that in the review of the carbine and the flash pop, they just, they do their job and they do their job well. You get two of them in here in the 22 cal, they're, uh, they're 12 rounds, all right? Now, on the bottom here, they've included a little weaver rail on the belly. So what that means to me is I can put a laser on there, I can put a flashlight, right? I can hang a bipod on there. So you put the laser on there with my open sights or the flashlight, and now I got something that might be appropriate to pop that pig in the head that's been digging in my backyard in the middle of the night or whatever, right? Okay, <clears throat> so before I get too much more down the power trail and you can see I'm mm, that way because my mind's just whirling here. The trigger, all right? Now this is the same Quattro trigger apparently that we see in all the Hotson product. We all know it's good. We all know it's adjustable. We all know it's dual stage. Um, the blades in every Hotson that I have recollection of reviewing have been metal. All right, now this one's poly, all right, like the rest of the stock. <clears throat> and that seems to bother a lot of you. It doesn't bother me. You know, being a policeman by trade, a lot of our, you know, the guns that we use that we, we that, that are there to, you know, guard our lives and the lives of other people. You know, they use poly blades and poly all over them. So the tactical, tactical polymer just doesn't bother me, but I have a hunch that when Hatsan went back to the drawing board to design some of this, they may have changed something a little bit about that trigger. I can't quite put my finger on it, but this is the best trigger yet I've experienced in a Hatsan and I've played with a lot of them, AT44, BT65, Bullmaster, Barrage, um, the Flash, the Flash, I mean, I've played with a lot of them. They're pistols, and there's something about the combination of this one's light first stage that has a really good weight to it. Uh, it's second stage break, doesn't have any slop or crap in there. And I could get it to a weight where I really wanted it. Now, out of the box, the thing was breaking it two pounds, 14 ounces, 13, four, so about three pounds if I remember. All right, now it's fully adjustable, like all triggers are at, on these Quattros, and the these two screws in front of the trigger, they pretty much came all the way locked down. Um, I took them that last little maybe 10th of a turn clockwise to make them lock down because I felt like that's where I'd get the best out of the trigger. And then this little bad boy here on the back side of the blade, I, I played around with that a little bit in conjunction with what the owner's manual was telling me. Don't get mad at me, YouTube. I'm just relaying instructions here, all right? And I went uh, eight, eight tenths of a turn counterclockwise on that screw, 
and I brought break weight from three pounds right down to about a pound and a half. And I could have gone even lighter, but that was a really good kind of median weight for doing what I need to get done on the bag. And I felt comfortable, you know, like up in this area that I'm not gonna be misfiring the gun, you know, but when I was ready to, you know, it would do what I needed it to do. So I just, there's something about this trigger that's just better. And that revealed itself and evidence, evidenced itself. Is that even a real word? It validated itself in the groups because I shot the tar out of this thing yesterday and, um, and, uh, and, and, and we'll get into, uh, we'll get into that. All right. Um, before we get down that trail, let's talk a little bit about optics on this gun. So this is a Bushnell Engage. It came to me by way of Air Guns of Arizona. It's price point appropriate for a $360 gun. You can head over there and check it out. I'm really enjoying it, but it was funny. I ran into a little debacle. When I was scoping this gun, I, I first used my Sportsmatch 7 Series tall mounts. And I put it all together, I plumb bobbed it, I got everything perfect with the bubble levels, and I couldn't get the damn magazine underneath the scope. I went, crap. So then I redid all that with a one inch scope with the seven series sports match mounts, and I couldn't get the damn magazine under the scope. So I'm like, what the hell? So I went back and I looked at the flash pup and flash carbine reviews I had done 12 and six months ago. And I, I was actually using the Sports Match 8 series extra tall rings to clear that magazine. So what you see in he, here now are the FX No Limits adjustable mounts. I actually have them um, completely collapsed, so I haven't um, input any adjustability into them. But in that completely collapsed state, I've been able to clear the magazine and I'll get some more 8 series mounts from Sports Match because we gave those away to you guys and the review discuss wins of those guns. So, but I'll, I'll get more coming from, from them and, and that's all good. But I wanted you to be aware if you wanna put a one inch or 30 inch scope on this gun, you're gonna have to find some extra tall mounts. I'd recommend the eight series and the sports match, the no limits mounts work just fine. The adjustable sports match mounts did not clear. Okay, something, um, something for you. Uh, to know. And the reason is to get this scope back far enough where your eye relief is proper, it puts like the fat part of, and I've tried several scopes right over where the magazine would be. And that's kind of the challenge of what's going on here. And that's why I believe you'll probably need extra tall mounts. If you figured out a way to not go through what I had to go through, please share it in the comments below for us all to, to learn from. And, and, um, and I would be grateful. All right, okay, uh, power, holy mother of you know what. This gun, in I can't imagine what this would be in 25 cal if I had shot heavier pellets back when I was playing with the carbine and maybe I tried them and, and just can't remember. But this bad boy is making 41 foot pounds of energy with the 30 grain H&N pile drivers and they are tic-tac hole sized accurate at 25 yards. And that pellet, where is that sucker? That bad boy is holding on to 38 foot pounds of energy at 25 yards. So leaves at 41, arrives at 40, uh, 38. You wanna talk about knocking the tar out of something with your open sight six and a half pound, $360 basher. Well, there you go, all right? So that's kind of what I was talking about with that. Now, there's kind of a caveat here, and I have a little bone to pick with Hot Sun, and they're probably gonna be mad at me for saying this, but you guys know I love you. But th th this gun came to me tuned in such a way where you pretty much have to have 25 to 30 grain pellets to get any kind of a usable shot curve out of the gun, all right? And by that, I mean, if I put like an 18 grain pellet in here, let's say I put an 18 to 20 grain pellet in here, right? JSB heavies to a Barracuda, all right? Now I'm gonna get, I don't know, 25 usable shots at 25 yards, maybe without too much point of impact change, 
right? But if I want to use this at 50 at a, or 100, right, that hammer spring is turned up so much to achieve that 41 foot-pounds that I'm going to get through 9, 10, 11 shots maybe, and then I'm starting to come downhill to where the extreme spread is going to exceed 25 feet per second. And, you know, it's not going to be all that effective at 50 and 100 for anything past, let's just call it 11 shots. All right. Now there's a solution to that. There's a couple solutions to that. One, you can shoot, all right, a 25 grain or a 30 grain pallet, all right, which does a very good job of smoothening out that power band so that now I'm getting, let's say, 16 shots, all right, at a 41 or 40 or 41 foot pound average with an extreme spread of 25 feet per second. So now I got 15 or 16 really good shots that are useful out to, you know, 50 and 100 yards where I'm not gonna be experiencing drop that I'm having to compensate for as the gun runs out of air. So, you know, these aren't necessarily bad things or good things, they're just things that you guys need to be aware of. In general, if you got a pre-charged pneumatic that's shooting like this, go up in the weight. It tends to flatten out that shot curve and it'll give you more shots. Now, the key is, will it be accurate? with the heavier pellets and boy gum, this bad boy is accurate. It's shooting tic-tac groups with 18 grains, 20 grains, 16 grains. Couldn't believe it was shooting the 16, this is a 16 grain, right? Yeah, the 16.2 grain H&N Hornet, which does fit in the magazine, by the way. Bravo, hot sun, and H&N. All right, it, accurate, accurate, accurate at 25. This thing was an absolute dagger, but Again, if you're going to shoot that 18 to 20 grain, expect 10 good shots, and then you're going to have to refill. Now, I'm no hot on master tuner. I'm sure some of you watching this are. I'm pretty sure you can dial back the hammer spring tension on this gun, so back off that, that, that hammer weight, or, and you can flatten out that shot curve. And maybe bring the thing down to... I don't know, let's see, an 18 to 20 grain pellets, it's running 950, 960 feet per second. So it's running 35, 36, 37 foot pounds, which is still a crap load for a 22, right? If I own this, I'm backing that down to 28 to 30 foot pounds, and I'm gonna get myself a couple of mags, 25 shots, maybe 30, maybe even 35 that I can use at 25, knowing I'm putting pellet on pellet without any point of impact change, that I can use out at 50 and 100 and know that I'm good for two or three mags. Now, some of you master tuners out there for hot sun, I would love to hear from you, and I'm sure so would all the rest of us in the comments down below. If you're able to tune a hot sun flash, I'm pretty sure you are, but I'd love to hear your experiences with that because this gun has so much great going for it. And you know what? There's something great to be said for if I want 41 foot pounds out of a freaking 22, you know, I can have it. But if I want to back off that hammer spring, bring that down to 30, get more shots, usable shots out of thing, I can have that too. I'm just pretty sure you got to take this stock off to do it. And that's something I haven't, uh, I haven't fooled with, but you know, if I figure out how to do that, um, after talking to hot a little more, maybe I'll answer some of your comments down below on, when you take us down to, down that path, all right? Um, filling, so this is kind of a little fun fact. I've had this hot sun fill probe for at least five years. So like the last, I don't know, half dozen guns or whatever that they've sent me for review, I haven't used the fill probes that came with those guns. I just used my old trusty hot sun fill probe. And, and I don't know what material they're using, but They've got some kind of, it's different than the, than the rubber that you see on a lot of fill probes today. It looks like some kind of really tough, hard silicone. Anyway, the takeaway is, and the short of it is, that I just take a little bit of ballastol, rub it on here with a Q-tip to clean them up, and I've gotten five years in industrial heavy use out of this little guy. And these O-rings um, on these guns just from whatever their fantastic design is with these O-rings, I'm guessing, and just wanted to pass that 
onto you guys. I know a lot of you are fearful of fear probe, of fill probes, and hey, you ain't the only one that's been filling a gun and had one of these things come out of the gun like a bullet and you know almost take your head off. That's happened to me. Not with this brand. I won't mention the brands that it's happened to me with. Not here, not now anyway. But um, anyway, all you do is there's a little dust plug. I'll push from this end so you can see it. All right, a little dust plug that comes with the gun. You just push it in there. All right, and that's how, uh, that's how you fill the gun. The reservoir is 165 cc's, very modestly sized, good. Helps keep the weight down. Is plenty, like I said, for a mag or two, or maybe even three, if you can, uh, if you know you're a tuner and wanna wanna mellow out the uh, the gun a little bit. But uh, holy moly, I'm just trying to sit here thinking if I've forgotten anything that I wanted to uh, wanted to share with you. I think um, you know, for those of you that are new around here, there's a full review coming on my main YouTube channel. This here is just a little baby channel where I can, you know, get a little bit more casual with you guys and and uh, and talk a little bit more uh, freely. So the plan right now is I'm gonna film Thursday and Friday, and it normally takes me I don't know, uh, 20, 25, 30 hours in the chair editing to put that video together. So early mid next week, you should see the full review of the Vectus over on AEAC Home. Uh, the landowner where I film was supposed to turn his entire field, my borrowed gun range, uh, yesterday. But we had such huge rain come through yesterday, he didn't do that. So I don't know exactly what that means for me. There may be a little bit of a delay in there. And looking at this, I just remembered one more thing I wanted to share with you guys. All right. Because there's 41 foot-pounds of energy coming through, as far as I can tell, a baffled moderator about that big, all right, in a fenced-in area, maybe 30 yards corner to corner, all right, maybe 20 yards deep, this actually makes my ears ring. I'll get pain and uh, my ears will ring, all right? So that may be different when I get it out in the field, but the, the, the sheer power of this platform is overwhelming the, um, the moderating system that Hatsan is using. I didn't notice that in the, the carbine, I didn't notice it in the pup, but I'm noticing it here, so I'm questioning, I'm wondering if they did something different in here that makes this a little bit louder. Um, it's by no means like a like a rimfire or a rimfire, it's not even in that league, all right? But compared to all the product I get to put my hands on in this power level and this price point and beyond, the, the sheer horsepower of this gun is overwhelming it's sound muting capability. So that is something for you to be uh, aware of. But um, so, you know, depending on the landowner and them turning down their field, I, I think I can get the video up, you know, early, mid, next, uh, next week. All right, so with that, let me say, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, thank you so much for hanging out with me for however long this has been. I know it's been a long time and um, I will see you again, I don't know, less than a week. See ya.